George Welch joined the Army Air Corps during World War II and became a P-40 and later P-51 pilot in the Pacific Theater. Welch was actually one of the few pilots at Pearl Harbor that got airborne in an attempt to thwart the Japanese attacks in 1941. When the war ended, Welch became a private contractor working for North American Aviation on their XP-86 project. The XP-86 was an incredible swept-wing turbojet fighter that would go on to be the basis for the F-86 Sabre and the F-100 Super Sabre designs. During flight tests, the independent NAA project was being conducted at Muroc Field the same time that the Bell program was flight testing the X-1. Welch was very interested in the X-1 project and breaking the sound barrier. During the flight regime test for the XP-86, Welch unofficially broke the sound barrier on October 1st, 1947, two weeks before Chuck Yeager would do it. To do this, the underpowered XP-86 had to enter about a 30 degree nose down dive while at full power for supersonic flight. While there is some speculation to this, there are witness reports of explosions that could have corresponded to sonic booms being created as Welch went past Mach 1. Then two weeks later on October 14th, Welch took off prior to the B-29 that carried Jaeger up for his supersonic run. History records that Welch landed about the time that Chuck Yeager broke the sound barrier. There are several notable witnesses that are very credible sources that note that there were two, not one, sonic booms that day that occurred about 20 minutes apart. While I simply don't have the time to delve into in this format, I personally believe both men broke the sound barrier that day in the dry October skies above the desert. Welch did it in a dive while Yeager was in level flight. Yeager's accomplishment is no less impressive considering it was the first supersonic flight in level flight. The reason Jaeger is remembered in my opinion is purely political. The newly formed USAF needed to prove its value and worth to the government. If their project, which had cost just under $5 million, was beaten by North American's XP-86 program, it would have been an embarrassing start to a branch that some people already questioned was valuable. On top of this, the XP-86 functioned as a normal airplane while the X-1 could even take off on its own power and still break the sound barrier. For those that still question the XP-86 ability to go supersonic even in a shallow dive, the aircraft officially made a mock run a few years later showing it was capable of doing so. There are a number of excellent resources that summarize this information, but by far the best in my opinion is Dan Hampton's Chasing the Demon, which is masterfully read and available through Audible.